these healthy people are number one, probably most significantly, they are independent of the good opinion of other people. They do not do what they do based upon how other people are going to react to them. Now remember, as we look at the ego, and what it says is one of the one of the <clears throat> one of the components of the ego is um, I am what other people think of me. I am my reputation. And how many of us are raised and are raising our children, are seeing our children being raised in a world in which peer group approval. You hear it all the time. I only do peer group approval. I do it because there's so much peer pressure on me. You know, I have to fit in. Self-actualizing people have no sense of that in their life. It's, um, it's just not anything that they even consider. And it's not just in, in those ways. They, they don't even notice appearances. They don't notice um, one of the other qualities of these self-actualizing people is that they, are, they, they, they see the unfolding of God in, in everything and everyone that they encounter. Just like they don't, they see past appearances, but they don't just say it. It isn't like this isn't just a talking game. This is something that they absolutely feel. It's like these are people who see the unfolding of God in everything and everyone they encounter. And they just simply don't notice. They are detached from outcome. That is, they do not what, do what they do in their life because of some outcome that may come their way. He called it, he said, they are growth motivated, not deficiency motivated. There's a very big distinction between being growth motivated and distinction or, or uh, deficiency motivated. A deficiency motivated person is motivated on a basis of repairing what is wrong with them and fixing it. A growth motivated person is saying, wherever I am is perfect and I can go so much further but I have nothing to put down. I have no deficiencies. This is where I am. It's summed up in this simple little bumper stipper, stipper, sticker. <laughs> you don't have to be sick to get better. You don't have to be sick to get better. So these are people, he said, who must be what they can be. They must be what they can be. Now, this isn't that they must be what somebody else thinks that they can be. This isn't somebody who must be fitting into something else because another quality and characteristics of these people is that they are resistant to enculturation. These are people who do not identify themselves on the basis of a culture, their culture. They see themselves as a global being connected to all of humanity. And there are, they do not run their life on the basis of the Tao. It wasn't until I read the Tao, and I don't mean just read the Tao Te Ching, but studied it and lived it for that full year when I turned 65, um, that I understood that virtually everything that Lao Tzu was writing about is what Maslow was speaking about with these people that they don't, I mean, Lao Tzu had, had uh, contempt for the law and laws. He said that people who run their life on the basis of what the law says do, are not Tao-centered people. Doing things because it's written down someplace for self-actualizing people is an impossibility. And one of the most significant things that self-actualizing people do is that they never place into their imagination anything that they do not want to materialize and manifest. 
They never put into their imagination their thoughts about what is possible or not possible on the basis of um, what they have been told ought to be in their imagination. This whole idea of understanding that our imagination is our sacred place, it's a sacred spot within us. And so we don't want to put anything in there like, I'm, 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 only, I'm only able to do what I've always done. Or I'm only able to imagine what other people have conditioned me to believe that I can do. What's, all, what's already happened. I don't place into my imagination anything that someone else has uh, imposed upon me, like Ivan Illich. They place into their imagination, into their thoughts, that which they already believe is here for them, and they're just reconnecting to it. They're very great, greatly familiar with and loving the unknown. Wandering into the unknown, the mysterious is the most exciting thing for them. To me, said Walt Whitman, the most glorious thing in the universe is the most mysterious. And they're not looking for security. They're not looking for doing things the way everybody else does things. They have a sense of awe. Rumi said, uh, sell your cleverness and purchase bewilderment. Go through life being bewildered. And that's how these people live their lives. It's like this sense of awe at everything. And when they would see something new, they saw something even if they'd seen it a thousand times before, they saw it like a, a, like a, a little child saw it. In fact, self-actualizing people are very close to little children.